So Steam was recently doing this thing where they put a bunch of demos on the front page and called it the Grand Demo Royale or something stupid like that. So I decided to download, play, and review something that caught my eye. Although I do have one rule. No anime. Which ended up cutting out, like, most of the games there, so, so maybe a few. But only, like, three. <laughs> The first game that I downloaded was called The Bookwalker, a game where you play a so-called book thief, where you jump into books, turn into an edgy OC whose head is made out of paper, and steal an object from that book to give to your employers. Just like Inception. But the biggest difference between this and Inception is that in Inception, sure, yeah, they're breaking into people's heads, but, like, at least they're not committing plagiarism, which is a crime. Stop right there, criminal scum! Now, I actually enjoyed this game, much to my surprise. I mean, I was expecting to hate all of these and never even think about them again. But something about it kept making me think, wow, this isn't complete dog shit. And I'm still not quite sure what it was. Maybe the story. I do, however, know what it wasn't. It wasn't the combat or the crafting system, both of which seem to be random, tacked on, and shallow. But overall, this is probably the most fleshed out game that I've played. Unlike the next game! Now, I originally thought the title of this game was a pun, but now on closer inspection, I don't think it is. Like, E.T. has nothing to even do with it. That's not the only misleading thing about the title, however, because it's also not even a bullet hell. It's more of like a strategy, turn-based, dungeon crawler... thing? Uh, but whatever you choose to call it, the main idea is that you play a bull who's in a big maze, square room, and, um, basically, time moves when you move. What a novel idea that is. However, I mentioned that it's also turn-based, and basically how that works is whenever you move, every bullet in the room moves exactly one square further, including your bullets. Now, I quite like this mechanic. It takes a while to get used to, but once you do, the game can be really fun. My main problem with it is that right now it's just really basic, and I know that's the whole point of a demo, it's not meant to be a full game, but like, come on, three guns and all of them are worse than the starting gun? Also, there's not much enemy variation. There are the cats which fire a constant stream of bullets that you can kill, and the cannons that fire a constant stream of bullets but you can't kill them, and that's it. Now don't get me wrong, I do think this game has potential, but right now it's just completely empty. So, if you're watching and you make the game, uh, put some shit in it, is my advice. Also, it's really annoying when, like, bullets are coming down at you, so you can't really see where they are, or, like, their shadows. That, that can pr be pretty annoying. But, on the topic of annoying things... Into the Loop is a brutally hard game where you play a circle, jumping into more circles. It's actually pretty fun, and I genuinely think that it actually does have quite a lot of potential. Ah, uh, don't really know what else to say. The point system's a bit contrived. I feel like it couldn't really make a very long game, but like, who cares? Um, also it's very hard, like, very, very hard. Fuck you, level 2. Hold on, brutally hard, just like Dark Souls. And you know what else is like Dark Souls? Last Night of Winter is what we in the industry call a Souls like. We call it this because it's very much like Souls music. Seriously, think about it. They both have. Um. Ah, oh, fuck it. It's called Souls-like because it's like Dark Souls. Or Demon Souls, arguably, if you're pedantic. Dodge rolls, check. Bonfire, check. Estus flasks, check. Hell, it even has its own version of the Homeward Bone. The main difference is that everyone's a skeleton. Oh, the most scariest creature of all. Wow, skeletons, yep. Uh, also, that is like a top-down isometric hack and slash, but I mean, who cares? That's barely a difference. Now, I ended up actually quite liking Last Night of Winter, although I'm not sure if that's just because I like Souls-like games. Because there sure as hell are a lot of problems with Last Night of Winter. For example, the combat's extremely simple, the platforming's just annoying, the environment is kind of bland, and there's way too much hand-holding. Like, there's a whole tutorial for shortcuts, but like, 
the whole point of the undead parish to filing shrine elevator was that it was like a surprise like oh well i'm back here but it was just like oh yeah here's a shortcut you can use these to get back to your bonfire like i Shut up. But probably the biggest indictment of this game is that it's just too easy. And I know saying that makes me sound like some sweaty nerd fingering my katana as I'm about to write a angry Reddit thread about how too easy this weird demo about skeletons is. But I mean, the whole point of a Souls-like is for you to get really angry at a stupid-ass boss because it's complete fucking bullshit, go to bed crying, and then wake up in the morning, kick its ass. And you just don't get that in this. But the biggest problem with Last Night of Winter is that even if, in the full release, all the combat is fixed, the platforming is beautiful and flowing, and the level design is just perfect and spectacular, there will still be the problem of that we already have enough Souls likes and we don't need another one. I mean, if you want to get the full experience, play Dark Souls, it's not going anywhere. Or hell, if you can't afford it, Hollow Knight. I mean, Hollow Knight's great. You know what else is great? My segues. Ordinary Highway, which is a fucking mouthful to say, um, is a very stylish game where you fly around in a car and shoot other cars. Don't think that's legal? I'm pretty sure there's a word for that, but you know. Now, while the shooting and general gameplay in this game is quite basic, the general execution and presentation is just beautiful. The colors, the explosions, the sound effects, the interesting enemy design, if you can call them that, it's all very visceral and just game feel is the word, I suppose. However, there is one big problem, and that's a lack of checkpoints. A lack of motherfucking checkpoints. And the only game feel that that gives is the feeling that maybe this game's kinda shit. And just to make it clear, not having checkpoints isn't exactly a problem in games, so long as it's like a roguelike, where every time you restart, the entire world is randomly generated. But in Ordinary Highway, it's just not like that. Every single time you replay the game, it's the same exact level, same exact enemy placement, and same exact everything, basically. But apart from that, it's basically just a perfectly fine, pretty fun, brutally difficult, bullet hell arcade game. And there's nothing wrong with that. I actually quite like the game. Unlike... <sighs> Now, Alien Dawn is a game of lots of little problems that just build together to create something truly awful. For example, the game has invisible walls everywhere, the physics is generally janky, the zombies move too fast and have too much health for any form of combat bar vehicular manslaughter to be viable, and worst of all, you don't hold down a button to look down iron sights, you just press right-click, just to name a few. Now, as I said before, all of these are very small things, and in the full release, they could just get patched out. But that leads to the biggest problem with Alien Dawn, which is that, along with a severe lack of aliens, we've already seen it before. I mean, it's the last night of winter problem again. We already have plenty of weird, shitty, janky Unity games about zombies. And it just feels like adding on to the pile. Pile that's already been moved away to the farm, because it's a pile of shit. Um, and yeah, that's... Basically it. Alright, next game. I really like the overall aesthetic of Wrath of the Mad King. The futuristic dystopian megacity contrasted with the great outdoors. But enough of that, now let's talk about why this game is shit. Wrath of the Mad King is a very fast-paced twin-stick shooter, which I think is the first big pitfall of the game. While in the big dystopian megacity, all you can really do is walk around specifically not shooting random people on the street. But then when you walk into the forest area, about a thousand cute wildlife try to maul you all at once. Jesus. Uh, on top of that, it's really annoying how your special abilities are bound to the number keys, especially with the dodge button. But apart from that, the guns are all pretty good, I guess. Alright, next game. <laughs> Witchwood is a game where you play a witch, and you're in the woods, and you have to, like, craft potions. I actually quite enjoyed it. I found the 
core loop quite enjoyable of finding materials to craft the potion, then crafting the potion, and using the potion to get the fucking shiny rock or whatever. Although I feel like since the core gameplay loop is in itself quite basic, I feel like an entire game just with those mechanics uh, could get pretty repetitive. Yeah, not much else to say on it. Un forastero! Next up is Conscript, and can I just say, this is a bloody long demo. Like, it took me about an hour and a half before I just, like, gave up, didn't even finish the old demo. But anyway, Conscript is kind of like Resident Evil 4 a bit, but 2D, and also said in World War 1, and without mutant Spanish people. I didn't really like the combat, and that's most of what it was, just gun combat, which was really bad in the top-down view. And I felt like the environments were quite over-designed, like, often I couldn't tell where I was meant to go in a level. Also, I think there was a stealth mechanic, wasn't really sure, which, I mean, says all you need to know about it, really, if I don't even know if it was a thing. Also, stamina regenerates really slowly, like painfully slowly, especially with how fast it runs out when you're sprinting. Um, and yeah, that's basically it. Alright, next game. Fuck. 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 Fuck you. Postal Brain Damaged is the fifth game in the Postal series, and unlike any of the previous games, is not a twin-stick shooter, open-world sandbox, or garbage fire. Instead, it's a retro FPS, or as the cool kids call them, a Doom clone. Now, this game is very hard, much harder than Doom. Maybe at a Shadow Warrior slash Blood level? And that's mainly because of the incredibly annoying enemies. They're the fast, hard-to-hit dogs, the shotgun-wielding Trump voters, who I swear can hit you from halfway across the map, and the much larger dogs that'll maul you as soon as you get near them. On top of that, it's extremely buggy. Whenever you load a save, you get catapulted a thousand yards, sometimes resulting in you ending up in out-of-bounds areas, and at one point, I just started swimming in midair, which was actually kind of fun. But then at the end of the level, every enemy became invincible, which was less fun. Also, the dude's constant quips became really annoying after a while. Is it pronounced gib or jib? I don't know, postal dude. How about you ask me another thousand more fucking times to help me make up my mind. But besides from all that, it's basically just a perfectly visceral, fast-paced Doom clone. My only concern is that the level is very open-ended, and combine that with the speed of most enemies, this game feels worryingly like that painkiller slash serious Sam breed of retro-inspired FPS that's basically just backpedaling hell. Ah, uh, so, yeah. I hate memes. Kingdom of the Dead is another brutally difficult retro FPS that's actually quite different from PBD because Kingdom of the Dead's level design is much more tight, and its enemies are far less annoying. Except for the birds, and the dogs, and that caco demon thing that has a tracking attack, which is complete bullshit. Alright, maybe it does have annoying enemies. Also, I really hate the black and white palette for two reasons. One, you can hardly see what the hell is going on, and two, it makes every area look the same, so a carnival ride and a grungy sewer will both have the same impact on the player, and I can't really see a full-length game being that interesting when it's something like that. Don't get me wrong, though, I do like KOTD, but I just feel worried that it won't be able to keep the player's attention for that long. Alright, next game. You know, this is the third game in a row that I've described as brutally hard, but I mean, that's the best description there is for Skull Chains, which is a game where you play a skull that's very vulnerable, chained to another skull that's very powerful, and you need to kill a bunch of bugs in a circle. Yeah, it's not very story-based, but, I mean, who cares? It's very arcade -y, and it feels like it could serve well as a mobile game. And, I mean, there's no problem with that. I actually really liked the game, especially the core loop. Although it could do with a tutorial, because at first it was kind of confusing what the hell I was meant to do. Also, one more problem, the sprite for the player and the weapon skull thing they use to kill the bugs could be more different. Like, right now, they're just a big skull and a small skull, so it's really hard to tell which one is which. Um, and yeah, that's basically all there is to it. Alright, next game. <laughs> Timothy and the Tower of Moo is a retro-style NES platformer, which you really don't see that much anymore, and once again, it's 
brutally hard. And I'm starting to wonder if these games actually are brutally hard or if I'm just bad. Although the main reason why it's brutally hard is because of how few lives you're given and the fact that there's basically no way to get them back. Like for most of the game, I was playing with just one life trying to barely scrape through like this super meat boy or something. And I don't think that's how the game is meant to be played, especially with really annoying enemies that shoot homing projectiles that'll fall you to the ends of the bloody earth. Ah, uh, but besides from that, the platforming's fine, I guess. Really not much to talk about. Next game, I guess. Wait, anime? You tricked me, damn it! Well, nothing to do now, but double down, I guess. Transarubi is a very charming game, although it's also very basic. All the enemies are just a variation on Black Blob, and the world and level design is all very cliché. It all feels very safe. Or at least that's what I thought until the random ass police brutality joke, like what the hell was up with that? Also, I find it very easy. I mean, I only died like 70 times. And I get that it's meant to be more of a casual Metroidvania, although it could at least have like selectable difficulties. Like easy, there could be no enemies at all and you start with like a thousand health. Normal could be what the game is now. Hard could be like the Hollow Knight level and there could even be an extra one like Expert that's just fucking kicks you in the balls and leaves. Ah, uh, but besides from that, it's fine, I guess. Also, if that was all too anime-y for you, then, uh, you might want to get the hell out, because it's about to get a lot worse. Fool, you are already dead. Toho Koi Mystery Legend and Fantasy of Monsters is very similar to Postal Brain Damaged. Both are installments in fairly long-running series with somewhat unconventional subtitles, and both come with fairly significant changes to their formula. There is one big difference between the two, however, which is that PBD isn't a fan game. Now, admittedly, I've never played any Toho games before, but I know them from their reputation as bullet hells with good music for masochists. And I'm sure many fans of the series will be disappointed to hear that TKM isn't even a bullet hell. No, it's more of a turn-based strategy game where you walk around in a big maze of squares, meaning whatever fan made this must have also been a pretty big fan of bullet hell. Unfortunately, however, you don't play a badass action bull with a gun, you play a twee anime girl with a gun. A gun that is really strong. In fact, I won most ordinary fights in a single turn, which seems a little overpowered for what I believe to be a random item drop, but okay. Uh, so the combat is slightly unbalanced, but whatever. How's the story? Well, it's very confusing, and I'm not sure if that's simply because it's based on years of pre-existing lore, or if it's because the text is incredibly poorly translated. Although, if I had to guess, I'd say both. You play a grizzled amoral assassin named Kojima Koishi, and you must do something... And I think it has something to do with this crime syndicate called the Yuseis. Also, everyone talks about humans like they're some kind of third world nation. So what the hell are you? Hey, we're the Yuseis, ya sees. We don't make none of that humanity gabagoo capiche. But I digress. The whole board game overworld thing is kind of annoying, and so is the health system where you need to eat food that you find along the way, especially since most foodstuffs restore like 4 health, which is a problem when you have a max of about 200. But apart from that, I guess that if you like board games, anime, and magic systems that are completely overshadowed by military hardware, then I'd recommend this. Alright, next. Actually, that's it. Okay, bye!